Pray to Sri Ramakrishna for the peace and prosperity of the whole humanity. Shanti, 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 Hari Om Tat Sat. Om Sthavakaya Jadharmasya Sarvadharma Swarupine Avatar Varishtaya Ramakrishna Yatenama Asato ma sadgamaya Tamaso ma jyotirgamaya Mrityor ma mrityangamaya Om Shanti 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 Let us offer salutations to Sri Ramakrishna the Supreme God Incarnate. Let us pray to Him to lead us from unreal to the real, to lead us from the darkness of ignorance to the light of knowledge, to lead us from death to immortality. <coughs> Last time we were discussing about how one should strive hard to save oneself. What is required is, as Lord Krishna says in the Gita, Dhrityutsa Samanvita Dhriti fortitude, utsaha, enthusiasm. These are very essential for your onward journey in the spiritual life. It is very important to get success in our pursuit. So, spiritual life means it's a constant struggle. It's continuous effort doing consciously with full awareness you are to practice not in a careless way. So, then only he will be able to move forward in the spiritual path. In Dhammapada, it is also stated, the same idea is stated in a different way. It is said by oneself the evil is done, by oneself one is defiled. Purity and impurity belong to oneself. No one can purify another. You yourself must make an effort The meditative who enter the way are freed from the bondage of Mara, the evil. So, he is telling that you alone, you alone are responsible for lifting your mind. He who doesn't rouse himself when it is time to rise, who, though young and strong, is full of sloth, whose will and thought are weak, that lazy and idle one 
will never find the way to wisdom. These are the teachings of Dhammapada. Patanjali Maharshi also, in the Yoga Sutras, he teaches, Tīvra samveganam asannaha Bradu madhya adhimātratvāt The meaning of the sutra is success in yoga is speedy for the extremely energetic. The success of yoga differs according as the means the aspirants adopt or mild, medium or intense. That means how you practice spiritual disciplines, with what intensity you practice them is very important to note. But this putting forth of energy should be done as pointed out by Sri Krishna in the Gita, according to the methods taught in the scriptures. Lord Krishna says, Asanyatatmana yogo dushpurapa itime matihi vasyatmanatu yadata shakyo vaptu mupayataha. Lord Krishna says, Yoga is hard to attain, I think, by a man who cannot control himself, but it can be attained by him who has controlled himself and who strives by right means. In individual cases, instructions of the Guru will clarify how the precepts of the scriptures are to be applied in personal life. Now, the question arises. If it is true that a man can take a forward step only from where he stands, How does the man who has an overpowering element of tamas or rajas in him take even one step? The aspirant who fortunately has a preponderance of the sattva element will naturally gravitate towards spiritual striving and easily develop a sustained inflow of fortitude and enthusiasm. As it is not easy for the aspirant with an excess of tamas to suddenly become sattvic, how does he at all take a spiritual step forward from where he stands? The scriptures in effect give two types of answers to these questions. Firstly, you can transform your nature or the combination of gunas in order to bring about the preponderance of sattva, the natural outcome of which will be inflow of fortitude and enthusiasm. <laughs> Secondly, you can go frontally as you are and worship God in the manner of your being with what you have and that will very well do if you are sincere. As to the first method, that is, changing the constitution of the mind and bringing about the preponderance of sattva in our nature, 
and finally transcending sattva also shri shankaracharya teaches in vivek chudamani tamodva bhyam rajaha sattvat sattvam shuddhena nashyati tasmat sattvam avashtabhya swadhyaya sapanayam kuru the meaning is tamas is destroyed by both sattva and rajas rajas by sattva and sattva dies when purified that means you have to go beyond all the three gunas tamas qualities like sloth and sleep are destroyed by exercise etc and by engaging the mind in study of scriptures rajas is destroyed by sattva in the form of activities involving concentration of the mind then comes sattva you have to handle sattva also sattva dies when purified as to the second method shri krishna teaches as worldly people are endowed with sattva rajas and tamas so also is bhakti characterized by the three gunas these are the words of shri ramakrishna in the gospel a sattvic devotee De- meditates on god in absolute secret perhaps inside his mosquito net others think he is asleep since he is late in getting up they think perhaps he has not slept well during the night his love for the body goes only as far as appeasing his hunger and that only by means of rice and simple greens there is no elaborate arrangement about his meals no luxury in clothes and no display of furniture besides such a devotee never flatters anybody for money a rajasic devotee how does he behave shri ramakrishna continues he puts a tilak on his forehead and a necklace of holy rudraksha beads interspersed with gold ones around his neck at worship he wears a silk cloth how does a tamasic devotee behave tamasic devotee has burning faith such a devotee literally extorts boons from god even as a robber falls upon a man and plunders his money bind beat kill the see method the rabas adopt that is his way the way of the decoits one must take the firm attitude what i have chanted the mother's name how can i be a sinner any more i am her child heir to her powers and glories if you can give a spiritual turn to your tamas you can realize god with his help for sever demands on god he is by no means a stranger to you he is indeed your very own so these are the methods by which shri ramakrishna is telling the aspirants can take up spiritual path from where they are those who are in despair with the discovery that tamas predominates in their nature have a very hopeful and helpful message here for continuing in our sustained maximum striving one thing that we must always watchfully guard against is despondency that is the real danger you have to be very alert 
about dealing with despondency. There are two basic spiritual facts. God is our very own. Secondly, in essence, we are identical with the Supreme Spirit. These two facts cannot be negated by any power in the world. They can only be temporarily veiled by our own ignorance. Hence, our spiritual future is assured. The only battle we have to face is the onslaught of our own ignorance on ourselves. When we develop an insight into this basic fact, behind all our spiritual struggles, we can keep at bay all forces of darkness within and without and ultimately defeat them by divine grace. But if unfortunately we give in to despondency, even for a short while, it may overcome in a few moments our toil, some spiritual work of years. We have worked so hard, all this they become ineffective and it runs us over like a fierce tidal wave. Therefore, for making sustained spiritual effort, a firm, dynamic attitude towards life is needed. Sri Ramakrishna says in the Gospel, you can't achieve anything by moving at such a slow pace. You need stern renunciation. Can you achieve anything by counting 15 months as a year? You seem to have no strength, no grit. You are as mushy as flattened rice soaked in milk. Be up and doing. Gird your loins. You need stern renunciation. You ask me why you don't feel stern renunciation? There is a reason for it. You have desires and tendencies within you. You practice japa and austerities, no doubt, but they all leak out through the holes of your desires. So, in order to move onward in spiritual life, we must learn how to plug these holes, even after discovering that all the results of our spiritual striving are leaking out through the holes We must not get despondent for at least someone has definitely told us in the most unflattering language what is to be done in that situation. This should enthuse us to stir ourselves up and for this we need the grace of our own minds above everything else. So, whatever state we are position, we can very definitely go along the spiritual path. What is important is, you must be sincere in the pursuit of your goal. Then everything comes all right. Everything comes all right. And you have to observe yourself and transform your nature. It is very important and essential. Changing the nature means fighting your bad samskaras. To fight bad samskaras, you need 
Stern renunciation means stern discipline. In order to deal with your mind sternly, you need to be strong. If you are weak, if you are not healthy, then how can you achieve the goal? So you had to be strong, you had to be healthy, you have to conduct yourself in a way how you are able to move onward in your spiritual path. So, what Lord Krishna has said, fortitude and enthusiasm are essential in our spiritual life. Then, we don't, you don't have to be desperate. You are sure to see God once you are able to lift your mind, once you are able to free yourself from the torturing desires, then you will see how God is very near to you and you are very near to God. Page 567 It was the third day of the Durga Puja. The Master had been awake in his room at Dakshineshwar since early morning. The morning worship in the Kali temple was over and the orchestra had played the morning melodies in the Nahabath. Brahmins and gardeners, basket in hand, were plucking flowers for the worship of the Divine Mother. Bhavanath, Baburam, Niranjan and M had spent the night at Dakshineshwar sleeping on the porch of the master's room. As soon as they awoke, they saw Sri Ramakrishna dancing in an ecstatic mood. He was chanting victory to Mother Durga, hallowed be the name of Durga. He was naked and looked like a child as he chanted the name of the blissful Mother. After a few moments he said, Oh, the bliss of divine ecstasy. Oh, the bliss of divine drunkenness. Then he repeatedly chanted the name of Govinda. Oh, Govinda, my life, my soul. The devotees sat on their beds and with unwinking eyes watched Sri Ramakrishna's spiritual mood. Hazra was living at the temple garden Latu was also living there to render the master personal service. Rakhal was still at Vrindavan. Narendran visited Sri Ramakrishna now and then. He was expected that day. The devotees washed their faces. The master took his seat on a mat on the north veranda. Bhavanath and M sat beside him. Other devotees were coming in and out of the room. Master said to Bhavanath, The truth is that ordinary men cannot easily have faith. But an Ishwara Koti's faith is spontaneous. Prahlad burst into tears while writing the letter Ka. The first consonant of the Sanskrit alphabet. <coughs> it reminded him of Krishna. It is the nature of jivas to doubt. They say yes, no doubt, but Hazra can never be persuaded to believe that Brahman and Shakti, that Shakti and the being endowed with Shakti are one and the same. When the reality appears as creator, preserver and destroyer, we call it Shakti. When it is inactive, we call it Brahman. But really, it is one and the same thing. Indivisible. 
Fire naturally brings to mind its power to burn. And the idea of burning naturally brings to mind the idea of fire. It is impossible to think of the one without the other. So I prayed to the Divine Mother, O Mother, Hazra is trying to upset the views of this place. Refers to the Master himself. Either give him right understanding or take him from here. The next day he came to me and said, Yes, I agree with you. He said that God exists everywhere as all-pervading consciousness. Bhavana said smilingly, Did what Hazra said really make you suffer so much? Master said, You see, I am now in a different mood. I can't shout and carry on heated discussions with people. I am not in a mood now to argue and quarrel with Hazra. Hridaya said to me at Jadu Malik's garden house, Uncle, don't you want to keep me with you? Hridaya, the master's nephew, had taken care of him for many years. During the latter part of his stay at Dakshineshwar, he had treated the master harshly and often spoken rudely to him. Finally, he had incurred the displeasure of the temple authorities, he was driven out and was not allowed to set foot in the temple garden again. So he is asking, Uncle, don't you want to keep me with you? No, I said. I am no longer in a mood to get into heated arguments with you. What is knowledge and what is ignorance? A man is ignorant so long as he feels that God is far away. He has knowledge when he knows that God is here and everywhere. So according to Sri Ramakrishna's assurance, everyone is entitled to practice spirituality. And again he is telling everyone should practice in his own way. That's very important. But before practicing spirituality you must be certain that you are desiring intensely to have the vision of God. That means all your desires must be subordinated to that prominent desire of seeing God, realizing Him. So if the goal is set properly, then you don't have to worry God himself will show you the way and you will understand how by his grace you are able to practice spirituality. But in the name of spirituality if you don't give attention to your goal, then you may lose the path. You must be aware of the leaking holes. Hmm? An account of past tendencies, all sorts of negative forces enter into the mind. Under the influence of negative forces, you act in a very stupid way. That is a leaking hole. Whatever japa, whatever worship, whatever practice you are doing every day, it's all leaking out through that hole. So you have to be very careful and watchful. It's very important in spiritual life. Then only you can definitely change your nature. The combination of sattva, rajas and tamas, which is causing all sorts of happenings in the life. It's all the interaction of the three gunas, sattva, rajas and tamas. If you know how to play with these gunas, 
then you will be successful in your life in order to play properly you need guidance you need discipline you need fortitude you need enthusiasm that's the meaning of lord krishna telling mukta sango naham vadi dhrityutsah samanvitah siddhya siddhyor nirvikarah karta satvik uchyate what a fine idea shri krishna has given meditate on these ideas and put them into practice then you will see it is very joyful and it is worth practicing spirituality now any question mr bhatia any comments so patanjali evening 7:30 pm next sunday rajeshwari pandri pande will speak on the power of faith she is a very good speaker please attend this program we have guru purnima on july 9th morning 9 o'clock special worship flower offering then prasad will be distributed statue installation on july 12th sunday between 4 and 6 at the hindu temple of greater chicago in lamont swami atmasthananda ji the vice president of the ramakrishna mission will be here to dedicate the statue we have arranged this uh, program on saturday july 11th morning 11 o'clock there will be service instead of sunday service we will have service on saturday morning 11 o'clock all the devotees will be given prasadam that day please bring your friends to attend this special program chant the name of the lord and this glory unceasingly that the mirror of the heart may be wiped clean and quench that mighty forest fire holy lust raging furiously within oh name stream down in moonlight on the lotus heart opening its cup to knowledge of thy self o self drown deep in the waves of his bliss tasting his nectar at every step bathing in his name that bath for weary souls various are thy names o lord in each and every name thy power resides no times are set no rites are needful for chanting of thy name so vast is thy mercy how huge then is my wretchedness who find in this empty life and heart no devotion to thy name o my mind be humbler than a blade of grass be patient and forbearing like a tree Take no honor to thyself, give honor to all. Chant unceasingly the name of the Lord. O Lord and soul of the universe, mine is no prayer for wealth or retinue. The playthings of lust or the ties of fame. As many times as I may be reborn, grant me, O Lord, a steadfast love for thee. A drowning man in this world's fearful ocean is thy servant, O sweet one. In thy mercy consider him as dust beneath thy feet. Ah, how I long for the day when an instant separation from thee, O Lord, will be as a thousand years when my heart burns away with his desire and the world without thee is a heartless void. Prostrate at thy feet let me be in unwavering devotion neither imploring the embrace of thine arms nor bewailing the withdrawal of thy presence though it tears my soul asunder o thou who stillest the hearts of thy devotees 
do with me what thou wilt for the what my heart's beloved thou went thou alone o lord lead us from the unreal to the real lead us from darkness to light and lead us from death to immortality may all be free from dangers may all realize what is good may all be actuated by noble thoughts may all rejoice everywhere may all be happy may all be free from disease may all realize what is good may none be subject to misery may the wicked become virtuous may the virtuous attain tranquility may the tranquil be free from bonds may the freed make others free may good be tied all people may the sovereign righteously rule the earth may all beings ever attain what is good may the worlds be prosperous and happy may the clouds pour rain in time may the earth be blessed with crops may all countries be freed from calamity may holy men live without fear may the lord the restorer of sins the presiding deity of all sacred works be satisfied for he being pleased the whole universe becomes pleased he being satisfied the whole universe feels satisfied